This is One Sentence News, a daily podcast featuring three news stories with a sentence-long summary and one sentence of context apiece. I'm Colin Wright. This is a sponsored message. I've been using Anchor as my podcast host for a while now, and it's been a pleasure to use. Anchor offers benefits that most other hosts do not. It's free to use, but it also has a collection of tools that allow you to create a podcast completely within the Anchor website or smartphone app. They distribute your show to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other distribution channels without any additional effort on your part, and you can make money from your podcast without any minimum audience size. So you can use it as a more traditional podcast host like I do, but it's also got everything you need to start a podcast from scratch. If you're keen to give it a shot, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Friday, June 3rd, 2022. A quick note, I will be on a pseudo-vacation next week, so the email version of One Sentence News will be truncated into a shorter version for the week, and there will be no podcast episodes next week. Things will return to normal on June 13th, and I will be out trying not to pay attention to the news for the first time in a very long time, while hanging out mostly in nature in Door County, Wisconsin. So apologies for that gap, but things will go back to normal on the 13th. Now all that said, let's talk about the news. From Axios, Omicron is outrunning the vaccines designed to fight it. New data show that the most recent Omicron subvariants, BA4 and BA5, are different enough from the original COVID-19 coronavirus that existing antibodies from vaccines and previous infections don't work terribly well against them. These new subvariants are most prevalent in South Africa right now, as far as we can tell, with our diminished collections of data at least but are thought likely to spread fast once they establish toeholds elsewhere, much like Omicron did late last year and in early 2022, because of that further enhanced immunity. Efforts are underway to tweak existing mRNA-based vaccines to deal with these new subvariants specifically, but it'll take at least six months before anything solid emerges from those efforts, and it's not clear such tweaks will be meaningful in terms of superior immunity to begin with. From Reuters, Australia's Labour Party says it will govern outright. Australia's centre-left Labour Party has won its recent election, but also won enough seats, 77 out of 151 total, to claim an outright majority, which will allow them to govern without having to form a coalition. In practice, this means the Labour Party won't have to negotiate with the 16 cross-bench parliamentarians, most of whom are Greens and Independents, to pass legislation though they will still need additional votes to get anything passed in the upper house. The Labour Party did as well as they did, according to analysts, because of the exiting Conservative coalition's unpopularity in recent months, and because Labour committed itself to pushing Australia away from a coal-focused economy to become, in their words, a renewable energy superpower. And from the New York Times, Canada plans to ban handgun sales and possession of assault weapons. Earlier this week, Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau announced new regulations that will ban the sale, purchase, importation, or transfer of handguns in the country from this point forward, and a new piece of legislation that would implement a military-style assault weapon buyback program. That buyback program would not be optional, so folks who own such weapons would have to turn them over, though they would be paid by the government for doing so. Trudeau mentioned the wave of gun violence in the U.S. during his announcement of these new efforts, and though it was estimated in 2017 that there were about 12.7 million legal and illegal firearms in civilian hands in Canada, which is about 34.7 guns per 100 people, most of those are hunting rifles, with the comparably fewer handguns in the country accounting for nearly 60% of all local gun-related crimes. That bill would also amend existing legislation to make it a crime to modify a rifle to increase its bullet capacity, would give police the power to seize guns from people who have been deemed by a judge to be at risk of hurting themselves or someone else, and would increase the penalties for smuggling guns. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. 
You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects, like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts, at understandery.com.